Hello and welcome to Real Frank Movie Reviews. Thanks for checking it out. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the new movie, Violent Night, starring David Harbour, John Leguizamo, and Beverly D'Angelo. Now, we will not be talking about any spoilers, so it is safe to continue. We will break down some of the scenes and give this thing an overall score. Will this movie be added to the repertoire of your holiday classic movies that you must watch during Christmas? We'll get into that next. Real Frank. All right, let's get right into it. Violent Night starring David Harbour as Santa Claus, John Leguizamo as Scrooge, Beverly D'Angelo as Gertrude Lightstone, a very wealthy person in this movie, maybe a political, I don't really recall or defined. Um, so the movie's about a group of mercenaries attack the estate of a wealthy family, Santa Claus, must step in to save the day and Christmas. Now, I felt a lot of influences from other holiday movies in this. I don't know if that was intentional or they were trying to remake those movies into a new mesh modern. That's what it felt like to me, and I'll, I'll explain to you as we continue here. So the movie starts off with Santa having a couple brewskis on Christmas Eve. He's taking a break from his run there. And he's kind of venting and complaining about disgruntled kids, how they're greedy, how they don't believe in him anymore. And this kind of felt very, very similar to a movie I saw a couple years ago starring Mel Gibson, The Fat Man. The Fat Man, he didn't, he's losing faith in, in the world and kids and people weren't really believing him anymore. And he's, had, he's kind of burned out. Felt very similar to the premises of Fat Man, which came out a couple years ago. A very darker type of Santa Claus movie. And this is Trudy. Trudy is, uh, her parents are going through a divorce or separated. One of the two, I wasn't too clear on that. So they're going to Grandma's house. And that's the, the wealthy estate of Beverly D'Angelo, whose name is Gertrude in the movie. And that's Grandma. So that's where they're going. And here's the house. Now... The way they presented the house, <laughs> it kind of felt to me like this. Driving up to the Nakatomi building in Die Hard. Felt very similar. I don't know if that was intentional, them doing that, the way the camera was shot. Boom. Oh, Grandma's house? Nakatomi. Grandma's house where all the shit's going to happen? Nakatomi where all the shit happens. That's what it kind of felt like. And a holiday party. That's... uh. Her aunt, Trudy's aunt, and this is her family, her son and her boyfriend, husband, I'm not quite sure. They're having cocktails. They're, the daughter and son are all supposedly trying to get grandma's money, their, or their mom's money, so she's loaded and they all want a piece of it, so they like kiss her ass, and they come to this holiday party. And uh-oh, we have our terrorist, our thief, as we recall in die hard Hans ended up being just a regular thief going after those bonds and John Leguizamo just wants the money that she supposedly has in her house and kind of felt very similar oh here he is shooting his gun kind of similar to these people Hans ladies and gentlemen remember that scene when they come in the lobby and they stood it up and everyone's screaming and he goes ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Very bad impersonation, but I love that scene. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I like to use that line around the house sometimes. <laughs> so now they're jammed up. Oh no, the party has turned into a hostage situation. Felt very similar to Die Hard. I don't know if that was intentional or what, or making their own version of it. Just using this Santa Claus as a John McClane. I, I don't know. So there they are. John Lee with Zamos negotiating, trying to get the money, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, shit, Santa stuck. All he was doing was doing his job, trying to deliver parent presents, you know, John McClain, a cop, New York cop, visited his wife at her holiday party, and he's stuck, and the terrorists found him. Oh, my God, what's Santa going to do? What's John McClain going to do? <laughs> and this is Beverly D'Angelo. I had to do a double take to realize it was her when I first saw her on screen. The only way I recognized her was her voice. Her, was it for her voice? I mean, she looks completely Look at, this is her from Christmas Vacation and her now. Now, 
Christmas vacation, she's probably in her early, late 20s, early 30s, in her 30s. And now she's in her 70s. She kind of looks like now, like Heather Locklear back in the day, a little bit. So much plastic. She's almost, she's got to be in her 70s or early 70s. And, and so much surgery. I mean, I don't know what's going on there. It's just, it's pretty amazing. But, uh, wow. Wow. All I was going to say is, oh. yeah, let's continue. So, this Churi's going to bed. They gave their uh, walkie-talkie. Now, this walkie-talkie thing seemed very similar to this walkie-talkie thing. Again, this is my game. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else picked up on this, but that's what it felt like to me. And then we see Santa's kind of roughed up. He is roughed up, very similar to another guy. That gets roughed up, you know, very physically similar. And then another thing, there's a whole snowmobile chase scene, and these guys in military snowmobile suits, a la Die Hard 2. You recall the airport, military guys on snowmobile, there's a whole snowmobile chase, and they got the white suits on, and there's a gunfight. I don't know. It was, it was just too similar for me not to think that they intentionally did that or were making fun of that or... We're modernizing for whatever reason. And this is Santa's list, the naughty or nice list. This was kind of cool showing it uh, when it popped up. The person's name, it showed all the nice things they did or all the naughty things. So it's, there's some scenes with this that's used. So it's, it's very creative in that in that sense. And then Santa with his, his reindeer. So, I mean, it's very interesting. The, the beginning of the movie really sucked me in. I really enjoyed it. I was getting pulled in. And then kind of in the, the center of the movie, the middle of the movie, kind of fell apart for me. It slowed down. Um, Santa's backstory is a little weird. And and then kind of they tried pulling it back up, trying to pull it back together a little bit later. But for me, I kind of had lost interest. And I spent most of my time trying to figure out where these diehard references intentional the similarities <laughs> or not um there is an easter egg of throwback to stranger things that david or santa kind of throws out there it's very quick so see if you can catch that um and there is one very subtle one to die hard so that's where my confusion lies with if this was intentional but overall it's, it's okay so let me give a score for this thing overall i give this movie a five Point five. It had me in the beginning, but kind of lost me in the middle. It is uh, violent and bloody. There's an interesting scene where uh, Beverly D'Angelo's character gets punched. Now, the whole movie is very bloody, like cots and guns. and It was just fine. I like that. The way they did it was really good. It looked pretty nice. You know, it's from that. Realistic from that stuff, but the blood and gore. But for whatever reason, in her scene when she gets punched... She doesn't have a lot of blood, and they presented it in a way where she's wiping it with a tissue, and miraculously, that got away all the blood. <laughs> but she barely had any blood compared to the rest of the movie, compared to everyone else's injuries. That's was very odd and very strange. Maybe she had in her contract. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want a lot of blood, honey. It'll mess up my plastique. Spent a lot of money on this. May, may impede it or something. I don't know. So I give it a five point five. And that's my review for Violet Night. Until next time, thanks for watching.